I'm working in the Thermodynamics and Sustainable Energy Lab. What I mean with that is we're working on entire energy conversion and storage systems. Uh, for example, solar energy conversion. I will show you a couple of examples of that very briefly in, the, in two minutes. Uh, we're working quite a bit on fuel, excuse me, fuel processing and fuel reforming, hydrogen production via electrolysis and uh, the storage of hydrogen, uh, low temperature fuel cells, and uh, thermal and electrical energy storage. These are a lot of different topics, but they all tie together for me because they all have processes going on at the nanoscale and microscale on interfaces. I call it interfacial transport phenomena, heat, charge, uh, mass transfer on small scale interfaces. Uh, to show you quickly in the four minutes that I still have a couple of examples, uh, we're working on fuel processing or fuel reforming, which means for me converting a fuel to hydrogen or to hydrogen-rich gas mixture. For example, we are producing nanoscale catalysts, putting them into micro and nanoscale or structured uh, reactors to convert methanol in this case uh, to hydrogen as efficiently, as effectively as we can. Uh, effective means for us, for example, making a better catalyst to reduce the temperature of the reaction that we need uh, to have that reaction happen, which is very important uh, as I will show you in one more minute. Um, we're working on preferential oxidation of carbon monoxide. If you do steam reforming or fuel reforming, you produce a small but significant amount of carbon monoxide, which is highly toxic to human beings, to fuel cells that we use as well. And we have to get rid of that carbon monoxide before we feed it into the fuel cell. Uh, we do that with preferential oxidation where uh, oxygen oxidizes the CO without oxidizing the hydrogen, which is a very challenging catalytic process if you have water and CO2 and other byproducts in your mixture. And we were able to generate very good uh, novel catalyst for that pro uh, purpose. We're looking at entire systems, so we like to introduce that steam reforming, in this case of methanol, into an entire system where we produce the hydrogen, clean out the carbon monoxide. We might store in a compressed form the hydrogen if you need to, and then use it in a fuel cell so that our idea is to have a whole decentralized small-scale power generation system here. Um, if you produce hydrogen by steam reforming, that's, by the way, the way that industry today produces 90, 95% of the hydrogen in the US. You need a lot of heat to make that reaction happen. And we say we can do that with sunlight. Um, so our idea is to make small, simple, what I call intermediate temperature solar reactors or collectors where we have a highly selective absorber coating that absorbs the sunlight very effectively, has a very low re-emission of sunlight or light. Uh, we put it into a vacuum to reduce the heat losses and then we can achieve here 240, 250 degrees Celsius, most importantly, without focusing, without concentrating the sunlight. So we have here enough temperature to make the methanol steam reforming happen in one reactor without concentrating the sunlight. Obviously, the next step will be, we have started to work on that to take a lens or focus the light in some way, uh, achieve higher intensities of sunlight, achieve higher temperatures in the collector here, and then we can do more interesting chemistry than just the methanol steam reforming for example, produce hydrogen from natural gas from other hydrocarbon fuels. Um, to show you that we are not working only on more chemical engineering related processes and, and systems, uh, we're working as well on quantum dot solar cells, so photovoltaic cell, where we generate electricity in this material by adding quantum dots into our solar cell. Um, quantum dot solar cells are pretty new technology. They have been investigated for five, 10 years. What we're doing that's completely novel is we are not using a cadmium or lead-based quantum dot. So if you look at literature, almost all the fuel cells, quantum dot fuel cells, ah, sorry, solar cells, all the quantum dot solar cells uh, are based on quantum dots made of cadmium or lead, which, is, which are highly toxic materials. They're not environmentally friendly. They're not biocompatible. So in this project, we're working with uh, Dr. Leong's group from biomedical engineering who has biocompatible, completely non-toxic quantum dots for biomedical applications. We introduce them into a solar cell uh, and we can achieve, we're starting to achieve uh, reasonable efficiencies. We have to still improve that, but we make quite a lot of success or quite a lot of progress there. And we have flexible, biocompatible, completely non-toxic solar cells here. 